Greetings. Uh, today we're going to discuss the hypothesis that we presented first back in 2016 as to whether or not Daniel's 70th week runs from 2017 to 20, 2024. And we're going to discuss whether or not this hypothesis that we proposed has been invalidated given recent events. With the idea being that beginning with the sign of the woman in labor of 23rd September 2017, that maybe certain celestial alignments in the ensuing years were related to the 70th week of Daniel. And that was the, uh, the hypothesis that we had proposed is that maybe they were connected. Now the celestial alignments were pretty much centered around the sign of the woman in labor or so-called sign of the woman in labor on the 23rd of September, 2017, when we had the asterism or the stick figure of Virgo clothed with the sun, crowned with a crown of 12, the moon was at her feet and Jupiter was in the womb. And we had connected that possibly to Micah 5, verse 3, where it states that Messiah will give his people up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. And so we hypothesize that maybe the woman in labor of Micah 5, verse 3 is the same as the woman in labor of Revelation 12. Now, if this were the case, then if the woman gave birth three weeks after the sign of the woman in labor, if she gave birth on the 15th of October, 2017, the idea was is that maybe this represented the onset of Daniel's 70th week and that it would indicate uh, the coming uh, day of the Lord. Now, if that were the case, then we would expect to see that the midpoint of the 70th week would correspond then to the spring of 2021, which is where we are now, March and April. Well, now we're on May the 2nd, 2021, and we have not yet seen the abomination of desolation, nor have we seen the resumption or stopped sacrifices that our hypothesis suggested. So based on this alone, it would appear that the hypothesis has been invalidated. That, uh, that in fact, uh, this we are not at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week. And so then the question is, is, are the celestial signs meaningful, if at all? So there are possibilities. Uh, one would be that the celestial alignments of 2017 to 24 are actually meaningless that maybe they, it was a uh, false path or a um, uh, rabbit trail that we ran down. And I think to be fair, we have to consider the possibility that, that they were meaningless. Um, not that they were, but it's possible. A second possibility was that, well, maybe uh, the celestial signs described by John had nothing at all to do with Daniel's 70th week. In fact, in Revelation 12, the outcome of Revelation 12 is persecution of Christians and, and of Jews. And so we could make it the case that this is actually being fulfilled at this time. Uh, and we'll discuss this a little bit later. So maybe Revelation 12 is being fulfilled and is not in fact related to Daniel's 70th week. That's a possibility. Another possibility would be that the celestial signs um, are not meant for a specific timeline with specific dates in mind. However, they represent a generalized warning about something that would be expected to occur at some point in the undetermined future. And, and so it could be a generalized warning for future events. And, and that's a possibility. Or maybe it's just that I lack the understanding to put it all together. And um, certainly um, I'm not a prophet, nor would I ever claim to be. And there's a chance that I could be missing something or not understanding something properly. So we'll discuss each of these in turn. 
Well, were the celestial alignments of the seven-year period from 2017 to 24, are they indeed meaningless? Well, I think we have to consider that that, that is um, certainly an explanation that's possible. Um, we depend on planetariums that depend on mathematical formulas that project back in time the alignments of planets and so forth. And while I believe that for the most part they are fairly accurate, we don't have a great way to go back and actually test that. Uh, we can't go back in time to, to, to validate whether or not these formulas are true or not. So um, it's possible that the planetarium uh, computerized programs that we have may not be as accurate as we uh, think they are. Another uh, possible flaw would be that the stick figure asterisms uh, that we describe, um, maybe, uh, maybe these are assumptions that we shouldn't make. That's possible, too, because we really don't know what John was looking at when he was describing the events uh, of Revelation 12. So we're making assumptions about um, uh, figures of constellations and planetary alignments and maybe maybe that's not accurate so it is possible that the alignments are valid but it's also possible that it's folly and so we have to keep that in the back of our mind i don't favor this as the um, option but um, to be fair i have to keep it under consideration now another possibility is that uh, what we are seeing is that the Revelation 12 persecution that's described is actually fulfilled. It could be fulfilled prophecy. The result of Revelation 12, um, after unseen spiritual warfare, is that we have an angry dragon that's thrown to earth, and he pursues the woman and also persecutes her other offspring, described as those who hold to the testimony of Jesus. So specifically in verse 17 of Revelation 12, it states that the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the result of this is woe to the earth as the fiery dragon is thrown down, identified as Satan, and this results in persecution of Jews and Christians. And as we've documented previously, persecution of Jews worldwide increased markedly uh, beginning in the period from 2016 to 2017. And this has remained elevated for the last five years. And so, in fact, we have seen an increase in persecution of Jews manifest by worldwide increase in anti-Semitic events. We've also been able to document the increased persecution of Christians worldwide uh, to even include martyrdom of Christians for their beliefs, uh, particularly in the countries colored in this map. We can all remember the image of the believers who were beheaded on the shores of the Mediterranean in Libya as they were just trying to make a living to support their families and refused to renounce their faith and suffered martyrdom as a result. And this announcement occurred right at the midpoint in March and April of 2021 of the proposed 70th week that we had previously proposed. This is more in line of persecution of Jews uh, than it is of uh, division of the land of the everlasting covenant. So it's a timeline of sorts, but maybe not of division of the land. Another possibility to consider is that the celestial signs of 2017 to 24 represent a general warning of coming judgment in the near future, but undetermined, and not, be, not being able to tie it to a specific timeline uh, with dates. So it would not be timeline specific, and we couldn't be for certain when uh, the 70th week would begin, but it would be an indicator of what was to come. If this were the case, then I think the primary uh, event to watch for in world events would be resumption of the daily sacrifice. Once the daily sacrifice is resumed, then the stage is set 
for the cessation of it as discussed in Daniel 8, 9, and 12. This would be followed closely in time by the abomination of desolation when the man of sin stands or sits in the holy place of God. And once that happens, there is a firm 1290 day count until everything is wrapped up. And so that's what I would be watching for in the future, uh, paying special attention to any discussion of resumption of the daily sacrifice. And we know that the Temple Institute is completely ready to do this. All they need is the okay from the government, and they will be ready to resume sacrifice on a moment's notice. So I believe that's very close, uh, but not yet. We can see the birth pangs that Jesus discussed in Matthew 24 all around us. Hardly a day goes by when another announcement doesn't pop up in the religious Jewish media about another uh, Messiah that's on the horizon. So there's increasing talk of false messiahs. Another birth pang would be wars and rumors of wars, which we have increasingly all over the world. We have the threat of China invading Taiwan. We have China claiming the South China Sea. We have the dispute between Russia and Ukraine and the Donbass region of Ukraine. And Russia, remember, annexed Crimea from Ukraine. We have the struggle between um, Israel and Iran with Iran pursuing uh, nuclear capability. Uh, we have the war in Yemen, the war in Syria, uh, the war in Libya. So there are ongoing wars around the world, and um, there is concern for major worldwide outbreak of war. And so I would consider that these indeed would be birth pangs as described in Matthew 24. Israel has stated it will not allow Iran to become a nuclear state and recently suggested that its planes could reach any point in Tehran. Israel is nuclear capable and so I would take that threat seriously. Nothing has stopped Iran so far from working toward its goal. And I don't even believe a, a so-called nuclear deal will stop them either because even in the setting of the last nuclear deal, they were progressing with research to acquire nuclear capability. We also have the birth pang of plagues. Uh, in my lifetime and working as a medical professional, I have never had to wear a mask at any point in my life, and now it's a work requirement. Um, COVID first came up a year and a half ago, and we just reached a new daily high for new cases around the world led by a variant in India. It's unclear if the current vaccines are going to be effective at preventing spread of this variant, and we can expect further variants in the future, and there's been a suggestion that we'll ha have to take vaccines on a six month to yearly basis just to co cover the variants. And furthermore, we don't know about the long term safety issues that may or may not be connected with these vaccines. UN has also warned that we are at risk for famine in large parts of the uh, southern hemisphere, um, particularly in Africa, uh, where there has been a locust plague, but then again, wars and diseases have hindered distribution of food, and it's estimated that 30 to 50 million people may be at risk in 2021 alone uh, to uh, uh, be subjected to famine. And a good example of this would be uh, the country of Yemen, where civil war has led to malnutrition and as much as 25% of that population in famine is a, in, is a great threat. Now, false Christs, wars and rumors of war, plagues, famines, and earthquakes are all described as birth pangs. Um, Jesus said, indicated that when we see the abomination of desolation spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing or sitting in the holy place, then <clears throat> Um, then we know that uh, the time is at hand for the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation begins after the abomination of desolation. 
and after the birth pangs. Well, if we're in the birth pangs, then one thing that I'm, I will be watching for is resumption of sacrifice followed by the abomination of desolation. So the tribulation would begin really at the midpoint of the 70th week of Daniel. The first half of the 70th week is occupied by birth pangs, while the last half uh, is the Great Tribulation. And we know from Daniel 12, verses 11 and 12, that once the regular sacrifice is stopped and the abomination of desolation occurs, there will be 1,290 days for everything to be wrapped up. And then blessed is he who attains to the 1,335 days, which could point to the millennial kingdom. So I believe that if this is a general warning that we're receiving, that um, my attention going forward will be focused on resumption and then cessation of the daily followed by the abomination. And from that point going forward, we have a firm day count of 1,290 days um, for the seven years to be completed. The other possibility is, as I, is that I just lack the understanding to understand what the celestial alignments mean, that maybe they mean something, but I'm not fully equipped to understand it, and I'm not a prophet, and I wouldn't claim to be. And this is manif expressed manifestly in Isaiah 55, verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God knows what's going on, and um, hopefully as we move forward, we'll understand these things better. But there is a very good chance that uh, these alignments mean something, but I'm just not smart enough yet to figure them out. And whatever the case, uh, whether we are in this 70th week or not, or whether it's going to begin in the very near future, um, Jesus indicated and advised us to let our light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And so until that time, we need to be busy about doing the work of the kingdom while we're here as a testimony to his goodness and his graciousness. And as always, nothing catches him by surprise. He is in complete control, and he knows his timeline, and everything is marching forward according to his timeline. I believe that this could happen very soon. Um, I think we're at the very um, precipice of resumption of the daily. This could happen at any point. As soon as uh, the government decides it's in its interest to allow this to proceed, I don't think that will last very long no more than a few days at most, and then we will see the abomination and we'll know exactly where we are at that point. So until that time, uh, farewell and shalom. He is in complete control. Thank you for listening. Good day.